Hey everybody, this is GCSE and Nightcats Maths, uh, doing degrees of accuracy or standard form. Okay everybody, I hope you're sitting tight. Uh, some of this may be revision for some, it might be the first time you've ever seen it. You might have been off or may not have just been all there that day, that but did it in class. But I'm going to take you through what I mean by degrees of accuracy and standard form and show you how to do them in the calculator. So the objectives for today. We're going to round numbers to different degrees of accuracy. I'm going to show you two different methods for doing it. And, uh, yeah, you'll be very confident by the end of it. We will then use this to estimate our answers. Which is all great. Uh, understand how to represent a number in standard form, and indeed why standard form even has to exist. And last but not least, we're going to calculate with standard form. I'm going to show you how to use your calculator with standard form and how to do these standard form calculations. So degrees of accuracy, there are two different ways I'm going to show you, like I said, and the first one I'm going to show you is rounding to decimal places, sometimes written as DP. Um, and if I give you the example 12.562 to two decimal places, it would give me the answer 12.56. Now why? Well, first thing to point out is that dec two decimal places means you go to your decimal point and you go to two numbers after the decimal point. And that's all the numbers we want in our answer. So we only want two numbers after our decimal point in our answer. So anything to the right of that is superfluous. So what way we round it depends on what the digit after where we want to round is. So the method I do is I teach people to draw a nice line at the rounding point. So after the six, for instance. That's just two digits after a decimal point. That's where we're round. We'll put our line in. Then we'll look just at the number exactly to the left and the right of those numbers. Everything else is kind of, in the most case, totally irrelevant. Okay, so six and the two are, are the only things we're interested in. And what we do, we round 62 to the nearest 10 pounds, or the nearest tenner, or the nearest 10. And most people are very good at that because they can visualize the money. And know it's 62 to the nearest five or the nearest 10, sorry, is 60. And what we do is, I usually get them to write it down just below it, and then they can copy everything else down as it is just to the left. That's so you have 12.56. The answer is just whatever is to the left of this dotted line. So you get your 12.56. If I do another example, 9.558 to one decimal place, well your rounding point is there. Your box to the left and right is there. 55, is it closer to 50 or 60, I'm not sure. Well, they had to make a decision somewhere along the way so that it was consistent the way along. And if it's five or above, we round it up to the 60. If it's four, if it's 54 or below, it rounds down to the 50. So that becomes 60. And everything else to the left, that stays the same. So we get 9.6. And that's decimal places. The second one we're going to do is significant figures, and it's like decimal places, but we count digits from the left which are not zero to be our first significant figure. And we fill with gaps with zeros that hold the place. Now, none of those two things might make an awful lot of sense at the moment until I show you some examples. So let's go. Count significant figures from the left starting with the first non-zero digit. So if I have 49382 to two significant figures, we're going to round this to two significant figures. We go to the left, and the first two dig first digit from the left that's not zero is indeed a four, and the second one is a nine. And we do the same thing as before. We put our dotted line in and our box around these two bits here. We're rounding off this number and a line's around it here. So we'd have 93, the nearest 10, which is 90, so we'd have 490, and then we'd have a gap here. And this is where the place zeros to whole value comes in, because if I round 49,382 and get 490, that number isn't representative or rounded of 49,382, but 49,000 is, what I'll generally say is we Add knots until we get to the decimal point, which would start here. So we'd get 49,000. What about 0 0.05961? What counts significant figures from the left start with the first non-zero digit? Well, the first digit is zero, as the next one. The first one that isn't is the five. We'd put our line in here, draw our box around, 59 to the nearest 10 is 60. 
And we're only going to write down whatever's to the left of that line. We get 0.06. Now, probably saying why no zeros after to represent everything else. But we don't need them. We are only going to represent zeros to the decimal point. And we do that because that's what we mean by place value. We need, it's already included in this question. In this one, we needed to put them in. So that 449,000 was approximately 49,282. In this one, 0.06 or 6p is representative of 0.05961. We'd say one significant figure, especially as a decimal number like this, we only want to see one significant figure. We don't want to see more than that. What about 374.582 to three significant figures? Well, round a point, there's first non zero, two, three, there's your round a point. And we do your line in there, but a four and a five, round that nearest 10, we get 50. And our answer would be 375. It's not 375.0, because that would be four figures. That one can be a difficult one to get their head around, but if we can represent it just as a whole number without a decimal, we will. What about 0.9317? Try this one yourself. The first non-zero term is a 9, then a 3. And we round after that point. We've got 31 to the nearest 10 is 30. We write down everything that's to the left and get 0 0.0093. And that's significant figures in decimal places. There are ample examples in the notes for you to try see how you get on. Standard index form. Right. Standard index is a method for writing very large or very small numbers using indices. Why the hell would you want to do that? Well, there you go. What's that number? What? It's three trillion. And it's too big for a calculator or it's too big for my calculator. Some of your very fancy dancy modern calculators can keep going forever and ever but it won't fit in my calculator. And more than that, it's visually confusing to look at. There's very few people will look at that number and go straight off the bat, oh, it's three trillion. They'll probably count, oh, well, there's six knots. Six knots is a million. So next one, that's a billion. That's a trillion. And that's the process they'll use for working around. What happens is when you get really big numbers, the numbers become visually confusing to look at. So we want some sort of notation or some sort of way which we can represent the numbers that makes it easier to calculate. Okay, so we could say that that's 3 and 12 zeros. We could also say it's 3 times 1 trillion. There's two ways of doing it. 1 tri trillion is the same as 10 multiplied by itself 12 times. So what we could say is 3 multiplied by 10 to the power of 12. And that's the way we write it. Now, in this case, that number is totally accurate with that. But in many cases in standard form, we round a part of this number um, to give us a slightly rounded answer in standard form. And we'll see when that comes up later on. So we want to convert 500 in the standard index form. Now, what we could say is that's 5 times 100, and 100 is 10 to the power of 2, or 10 squared. So it'll be 5 to 10 squared. Easy peasy. What about 4,000? Well, I think you're probably going to start to get into a little groove here. That's 4 times 1,000, which is 4 by 10 to the power of 3. Not good. 60,000. You're right. It's 6 by 10,000, which is 6 to 10 to the power of 4. And I know what you're thinking. It's just the number at the start multiplied by 10 to the power of how many zeros there are. And you would be right in this case. You would also be right in this case. However, what about 39,000? Well, you'd probably say that's 39 by 10 to the power of 3. And you wouldn't be right because there is one other facet of standard form, standard index or standard form that I have left out. This number must be between... 1 and 10. The first number must be between 1 and 10 and the reason is that it makes it consistent for all the numbers that we have. Say we had 393,621,423,000 well we would still have 10 to 3 at the end but this number would still be visually confusing at the start. So what do we do? How about this? This is, this is a, bit, a wee bit of a problem. Well, what we say is, if it's between 1 and 10, after the first digit, if we put a decimal point there, 
how many spots would we have to do to move it so that it made 39,000 again? So if we put the decimal point after the first digit, it would have to go 1, 2, 3, 4. You'd also say it's 39, 3.9 by 10,000. But either way, you would get 3.9 by 10 to the 4. What about 6.97, the standard index form? Well, I have it represented here in a nice little uh, decimal place chart. Uh, 69,700 looks like that. If we move the digit after the first, or the this point after the first digit, we'd have to move it one, two, three, four spots. So we'd get 6.97 by 10 to the 4. Similarly, 146,300 would look like that. How many places have the digits moved? They've moved 5, so it's 1.463 by 10 to the 5. What are we going back the other way? If I give you 4.2 by 10 to the 3 in normal decimal notation, right? 4.2 is like that. And by 10 to the 3 means we're going to move it the other way, 3 spots. Or sorry, move this forward this way, 3 spots the decimal place and where would we get we'd end up with 4200 so we'd go one two three and if i fill the gaps with zeros out of a zero a zero etc etc uh, in this case it, it kind of visually looks like we've moved this number back with three spots which same kind of deal if you want but remembering this uh hundred thousand units hundred thousand units etc um can be quite tricky in an exam situation so I would usually move the dot forward three spots because right, that's what it means so it gives you 4200 what about 9.432 so we'd have nine and then we'd go one two three four five how many humps are have we we have two at the end with nothing underneath it we fill up with two zeros and you get 943,200 loads of examples for you to try there what about for really small numbers? We talked about how um, standard form can be used for really big numbers, like measuring the, the distance from planet to planet. I mean, that, those are huge numbers you're talking about. I mean, when you consider that it took, in 1969, it took them four days to get to the moon from Earth. And it's just, it's right there. I see it most nights. It's just that up in the sky. So what, what about really small numbers, like the size of atoms and stuff? Not that this is... 0.0005 is representative of that, but it gives us an idea. Well, it's the same idea that we had before. How far do we have to move the decimal point before it becomes a number between 1 and 10? So the number between 1 and 10 is 5, so we have to go 1, 2, 3, 4. But the difference is, because this is a really small number, we write it as 5 to the minus 4. So... 5 by 10 to the minus 4, sorry. So for really big numbers, we have 10 to a plus indice. For really small numbers, we have 10 to the minus 4, which gives us really small. Very small numbers have negative powers of 10. What about 0.00183? We'd have to move this 1, 2, 3 before we get to the first digit, so we'd get a number between 1 and 10. So it's 1.8. 8, 3 by 10 to the minus 3. If this is confusing, there is a nice easy way to remember to do the small numbers, but it's not consistent with the big numbers, so I don't I tell people to be careful with it. Why I learned it was that if you count the number of zeros, including the one before the not for the minus numbers, it'll always work. There's always 3. That's 10 to the minus 3. But I would use the, the move in the decimal point way every day of the week. What about doing the other way? 9.4 by 10 to the minus 4 in normal decimal notation? Well, start off with 9.4 and we'd go back 1, 2, 3, 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Right on our decimal point, fill your humps with zeros and you'd get 0.00094. What about for really small numbers? 2.73 by 10 to the minus 2? Same thing. Move it back two spots, you get 0.0273. I have a little exercise stuck up there about the planets that have stolen from somebody else. I can't even remember where it's from, so I can't even remember where to give credit. If it's yours, pop a note 
in the thing below and I will give you credit on the, on the website etc and uh, thank you very much for that resource but uh, it's something for you to try and that is the end of that aside from our calculator so there are calculator pressings in there but to represent standard form you will either have a button that says exp or by 10 to the power of x and to input the numbers that you have we use one of these two numbers so to enter 6.2 by 10 to the 3 we would either type 6.2 exp3 or 6.2 by 10 to the x3 Similarly, the enter 9.483 by 10 to the minus 6 is 9.483 exp to the minus 6. Exp means exponents or exponential. And that's another way of saying by 10 to the power of x. Those things are exponentials, much like indices and things like that. Okay, Just jargon and text speak for mathematicians. Um, not that, but some people just like to know what these things mean or why it's exp, etc. So if I have 2.3, 2 by 10 to the 3 multiplied by 3 by 10 to the 5. If we put that into your calculator, we would get 6 by 10 to the power of 8. You could also have done this using the rules of indices from before. You multiply our two numbers together. Two threes give us 6. And 10 by 3 or 10 to the 8 means we add the powers together. But it give us 10 to the 8. Similarly, 8 by 10 to the 4 divided by 10, 2 by the power 2 by 10 to the power of 2. You can put it in your calculator or you can do... 8 divided by 2 to give you 4 and 10 to the 4 divided by 10 to the 2 gives us 10 to the 2 which we subtract the powers in some cases you don't even need a calculator you're so skilled at what you're doing another example for you to try and this time I've, I've given you exactly how to put it in in the calculator your answer might be given in decimal notation like that which is just the whole number you probably want to convert it back to standard form. If you're given a question in standard form, you should convert it back unless it tells you otherwise. And what would be that? Similarly. That would be that. Remember, if the power is negative, or power is positive, it's a big number. If it's negative, it's a small number. The power tells you how many places the digits need to move or have moved. To multiply or divide using standard index form, Multiply or divide by the digits first and then multiply or divide by the powers of 10 if you can handle the numbers yourself. Otherwise, use a calculator. What have you learnt? You've learnt degrees of accuracy. I've got standard form, calculate my standard form, and I have also included some homework there for you to do. Um, I might have given you earlier on the year. If this is revision, it should be in your notes somewhere. I've also attached it at the bottom of the notes. Hope that made some sense. Any questions, you know where to get me. You can come and see me, you can drop me a comment in the videos below, you can drop me a comment on the website, or you can hit us up at Twitter at FlipMath, and that would do great. I'll see you next time. See you later. Bye.